Todd Schweitzer, the CEO of Brankus, talk about open banking uh, and how it's playing out in uh, Southeast Asia. And now we're going to hear from uh, Brankus uh, Chief Product Officer, Mike Dickinson, who's going to describe how, how they actually productize, uh, develop API products and, uh, and help uh, companies connect. Um, welcome, Mike. Thanks, John. Uh, happy to be here. Do you want to uh, share your um, screen? And then yep, I'll just sharing now. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's okay. get crack a lock in. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, uh, yes, uh, John. Thank thank you for the introduction. Um, hi, I'm Mike. I'm the chief product officer uh, for Brancos. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about productizing APIs um, and a journey and how we built API products so far in Southeast Asia. Um, uh, we're currently based in, um, in, the, in Indonesia, the Philippines, and in, uh, in, in Thailand. Um, those are our main presence markets uh, at the moment. Uh, our biggest markets today are the Philippines and, and Indonesia. So today I'm gonna be talking a little bit about um, sort of the journey that we went through uh, in how we um, effectively productize um, our APIs. But before we sort of get onto that, um, I'll talk a little bit uh, quickly about the state of um, open banking in Southeast Asia. Um, so still early days, uh, minus um, Singapore. Um, I'll talk a little bit to each of the countries. So, uh, in, 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 uh, and this is important context because we, um, the, a lot of the sort of regulatory and um, uh, compliance components of the, you know, each of the countries influences a lot of how we build our, our products, um, especially, especially from an open banking perspective, right? Um, and, you know, we'll get into a little bit more about the actual um, product itself um, or the products themselves, uh, specifically our funds transfer product and how that sort of matured over time, right? So Indonesia, um, so open banking standards have been um, um, sort of solicit uh, solicited uh, from the regulatory, uh, uh, by the regulatory authority BI, um, uh, uh, from from fintech companies as well as other banks as well. Um, you know, a roadmap has been generated through to 2025 um, uh, for that. With uh, you know, uh, Curis launching at the beginning of this year, which is for those that don't know, is a um, uh, is the QR uh, the QR payment network um, uh, for that. Um, Pandemic hasn't really led to uh, much regular change, causing stresses amongst, uh, especially a lot of the fintech companies. Um, and um, generally speaking, across the other markets, um, there's there's a higher there's a high penetration on on mobile banking and and uh, e wallets, and also uh, online account opening via video, uh, which is interesting. Listening to the astronaut guys just then, um, this possible opportunity there. Um, so. Um, the Philippines open banking standards, again, have been solicited for feedback. Um, there's no solid roadmap yet, though that's being, um, uh, that's being um, made more solid over the coming weeks. Um, uh, 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 really interesting is that the pandemic has led to regulatory changes. So things like their, um, uh, their, their uh, global payment switcher and Instapay, pan uh, the pandemic has, um, has led to the Instapay network being made free of charge as an example. Um, and the, the BSB um, has been setting guidelines for the establishment of digital banks as well, and also payments are still um, sort of early days compared to the likes of Indonesia, but they are growing in maturity and uh, has it to say, they are growing quickly. Um, finally, I'll talk a little bit about Thailand. So standards are currently under discussion uh, with the BOT. Um, the, the larger banks have started to create uh, product APIs um, um, though they have a more centralized network over there. Um, fintech companies are struggling to gain access to banking infrastructure, but demand is increasing. Um, what is really interesting in, in Thailand is um, the regulatory bodies tend to be on the more conservative side. Uh, so things like strict lending criteria are surface, which um, uh, leads to situations where um, uh, not as many fintech companies um, have, uh, have been born. Um, and then finally, uh, the BOT has imposed stricter lending criteria, uh, both online and offline. 
Um, so I, I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, sort of what that means for us, right? So uh, really our business is um, split between two aspects. Uh, number one, the supply side, number two, the demand side. So the supply side effectively refers to um, us being able to provide um, open API infrastructure uh, for banks, right? And and that's that's where 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 we originally come from, right? So um, open banking in Southeast Asia, as I mentioned before, minus Singapore, is still early days, and so therefore the um, um, what we what we contribute to um, uh, to banks, right, is to be able to provide them with an open API uh, offering, right effectively to open up their core banking services so that organizations, um, uh, fintech companies, um, as well as other businesses can start consuming these core banking services. Um, on the demand side, which is a more recent development at Brancas, refers to the aggregation of these APIs surfaced by the banks. And you know, if I was to draw a, a line comparison there, two layer in the UK or Plaid, in the US, right? Um, we surface APIs um, uh, uh, from the banks so that they can be consumed by whoever wants to use them, right? So we'll, I'll talk a little bit about the journey of sort of how we, we got there. Um, so first we'll talk supply side. So th there was a problem um, that we, we, we identified um, and realized that, um, uh, you know, in order to like actually service uh, APIs um, in, in, a, in a simple fashion, in an aggregated fashion, towards uh, customers that are coming to us for, you know, for example, uh, soliciting a funds transfer or doing a, a retrieval of transactions. Right? Um, we 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 had to partner uh, and still do today have to partner with banks in order to op um, effectively open their core banking systems. Right? And so we started going to banks and building this sort of um, open API layer. Um, and, um, and you know, one of which, of course, is the funds transfer mechanism, which is what we'll get to in a second. Um, so, you know, these, these projects are really complex. Um, all banks are at different stages on their, on their journey. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll refer to, you know, sort of um, um, to that, that funds transfer product and how that sort of matured in a moment. But first, what we have identified, right, really is that when we were talking to banks, there are generically speaking three levels of readiness for open banking APIs, right? And so we, we provided an, um, different offerings at these different levels. I'll start at the most uh, at the advanced side because, you know, it, it doesn't occur very often in this part of the world. Um, and um, and really, what this means is that you know the bank um, um, has already started um, opening up um, their 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 API layer to um, to customers, right? Um, to consumers to uh, consume directly. So uh, an example of that um, is the Union Bank in the Philippines, uh, banks in Singapore, whereby you are able to connect through an um, uh, through uh, through through a dev portal. They have good API documentation and being able to review this and connect uh, and test within a sandbox quickly is, has already been made available. However, this is the this is the the one percent, right? Um, the vast majority sort of sits um, between intermediate and basic, um, and so this is sort of where we come in. Um, uh, 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 you know, uh, with the service offerings that we have at Brancas, whereby we go in and we help support these um, uh, these banks with building out, you know, sort of their 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 architecture. Now, every sir, every bank that we approach is bespoke because, you know, first and foremost, the core banking systems that they have to offer are all different. They're all at their own stages in terms of what they have uh, to offer. Um, you know, being able to access private APIs is something that you know we, um, you know, that you know that 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 we, that we yearn for. But of course, there's lots of conversations for us to even get there. Um, but to give you an example, like things that we've done are um, building out um, the developer portal, building out the um, uh, documentations portal for a bank in Vietnam. Um, we've also um, uh, we've also gone in and. Um, built out their uh, built out API gateways. Um, we've even helped banks with their own private APIs so that, that we can surface them to an open uh, uh, an open endpoint. And really, what we we try and provide is 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 the service because what it leads to 
in um, is is the sort of demand side as I was talking about earlier. So preparing for demand. So what what does this mean? Well, we want to aggregate um, the APIs, and so what we've done um, is is we've built these in internally. Um, to ensure internal consistency and also to allow us to dog food faster. Um, and, ex um, you know, uh, an example um, is sort of like, sort of the endpoints that we've utilized, right, for this funds transfer product. So for example, being able to, um, uh, to uh, you know, to, to uh, for us to internally call an endpoint so that we can um, uh, uh, surface the ability to select multiple banks. Um, um, we can also retrieve all data and uh, all, so all available banks that we have integrated to. We can um, trigger um, a funds transfer um, as a result of that. Uh, also handling the various TFA flows and also um, uh, internally retrieving a transfer status in relation to um, uh, in, in relation to uh, the banks that we've we've built these integrations with. Um, what this has led to is the sort of customer, um, you know, customer-facing APIs, right? So, um, using using that direct or funds transfer example, um, we created a simple endpoint um, for a fintech company or, or any sort of business to be able to solicit a funds transfer from bank A to bank B. Now. Why did we do this rather than surface all the APIs which are available internally? Well, there's multiple considerations, right? So number one was around security, right? So what we created uh, was our own IDP um, to basically surface uh, multiple banks. Um, and we care about security a lot. So um, um, it's, it's being able to sort of manage um, um, that the, the, the security mechanism in relation to each of these integrations with the banks. Um, Number two was onboarding, right? So um, reality is is that uh, most uh, nearly all, all companies that we've we've talked to want to be able to easily um, get onboarded um, using a simple endpoint on their side and start testing immediately uh, through our um, the sandbox that we have to offer, right? And so um, and what that means is that uh, rather than having to call the internal uh, the well, the, uh, a surface uh, internal APIs as I had mentioned before, right? We simply call the individual endpoint. What that does is surfaces the IDP, and we'll go through the flow in a second. And then um, what that then does is allows for uh, a funds a funds transfer to occur. Um, number three is uh, you know it's the aggregation of bank flows. So the reality is is that the um, there's no real standard around open banking. There's no real way that these banks are uh, surfacing APIs. We don't like each bank has a different OTP flow. Uh, each bank has um, uh, different bank accounts which sit within their um, their particular accounts. So we aggregate all these flows under one roof. So that uh, again, it's something that the development team on uh, on our customer side um, they don't need to worry about. You know all these different flows. As well as also, they don't need to worry about um, uh, the, st the, the, the stability because that's something that we deal with. Finally, um, uh, companies that have developers on hand, um, the, this is the persona that we were uh, we've been targeting with this, right? Um, really, if you're an organization which has a, a developer shop um, uh, as a third party or an internal dev house, um, you'd be able to build into these APIs fairly simply. And I, I, I put that context in place because it will lead to more of the maturity of, of the product in, in the next few last, you know, next few slides. So what does this mean? Um, so really the client has to uh, invoke um, the authentication endpoint and our checkout endpoint, right? And what that, what that means is that it really solicits this IDP flow whereby we request the end user um, uh, for consent. Now, this is uh, a very, you know this is based on PSD2 open banking standards uh, in in Europe, right? But really, it, the data belongs to the end user, and so the consent once it's been given by the end user, they are then provided with a um, uh, the, the 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 login for the bank, right? Now. We actually have um, also as a part of this process a way to uh, a bank a bank selector component, which we you know which the um, the, the which the end user can determine. So say for example in Indonesia they wanted to select uh, uh, BNI, BRI, BCA in order to do the funds transfer, uh, they can. 
enter your username and password for that bank, and then you go through the uh, relevant OTP flow, right? Now, as I mentioned before, each bank is different, right? And so what we try and do is we try and make sure that we um, we account for all these UX flows uh, within, uh, within the product. Um, then the end user will go through and um, is, is asked about their um, account details, um, then their OTP flow, and then finally, um, there is a, a success on the transfer or failure if if it uh, if it hasn't worked, right? Um, so then the uh, you know we we also provide a callback so that you know for example um, uh, through the V1 transfer endpoint uh, endpoint um, we you know we then provide you the ability to check if if the funds have been successfully transferred so that you can update your applications. Um, so that's the the direct IDP. So what has that has that led to? So that was focused more on the um, on the uh, the medium to larger and uh, uh, use case for um, uh, for for fintech companies and and larger enterprises. Um, however, we did come across a problem, right? So a lot of companies in the Philippines and Indonesia do not have uh, the technical resourcing. In fact, the vast majority don't. Uh, with, uh, means to actually build to such an endpoint, right? However, we did recognize a problem, right? In that, in uh, in the Philippines and in, in Indonesia, you know, a lot of people were doing funds transfers. However, they weren't able to track, you know, for example, screenshots were being, you know, sent through Facebook. Um, you know, bank details were being uh, shared through WhatsApp, right? And so, what we realized was that, oh, well, you know, we could actually leverage. Um, the APIs that we already surface uh, in order to create a, uh, a a basic feature on top of um, the AP, uh, the endpoint that we've already created, right? So what does that mean? Well, it means that we created a um, a, a product called Pay. Um, it's a very basic invoicing tool. We we never intend for it to get overly complex, right? But it it's it really solicit um, it really hammers home the point around um, how you know what we're trying to do here is solve problems for our customers. Via um, you know sort of the the, the different sizes um, and and use cases that they have. So you're you're a small uh, cookie merchant. Um, you're, you're selling cookies in in the Philippines. Um, you're able to go in, create an invoice um, through our application. Um, uh, the invoice is then surfaced to the end user. Right, they are able to track all their different line items. Um, and this basically, you know, because we're just injecting the destination account details via API um, into um, the IDP, which I was showing before, right? The bank details are never sh shared with the end user. Um, and so what happens here is that the end user then simply goes through and, um, and solicits the, um, uh, the funds transfer through the direct uh, uh, through the direct API. Now, from an integration standpoint, there is no need for it, right? So it's really a, a very basic application to um, for 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 micro businesses to be able to use the same product. So, in conclusion, um, we biased towards persona types and what they needed. Um, we focused on being API first, uh, as you can see from our background there. Um, we we want to own the the user experience for aggregated APIs, and and that's how, why the API, uh, why the IDP was created. Um, um, and even with the simplicity of integrations and our external APIs, onboarding takes time, right? This is something that we learned, and we are uh, you know we found that even though it only takes like a day for somebody to build into the direct API and 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 manage that, there's all the other processes around um, uh, business processes that happen around that which means that it can take you know, weeks, even months, for a customer to go live with our products. Um, and then finally, the market is, you know, generally speaking, very visual still. And it's, uh, again, generally speaking, still in a more immature state, right? And so um, it's you know, using pay um, to actually show what our products do is, is, um, is, is actually part and parcel of actually surfacing what the direct API does. And thank you. <laughs> Sorry, a lot, a lot of content to get through. Thanks, thanks very much, Mike. Um, so the um, one one thing I, I guess I'm, I'm curious about is when you have helped uh, firms to to actually uh, build um, uh, expose their, their APIs. You mentioned the the, um, the design process of defining defining the APIs. Um, what, um, 
how how long do you typically see how many how many iterations do you typically see actually when you when you leave um i can't talk to you anymore so um the um uh, are you able to come back on otherwise i can't hear you reply okay i seem to have lost Ah, oh, here, here he is. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, I didn't got disconnected. I didn't, I didn't want you to leave quite so soon. <laughs> um, so, um, and the trouble with uh, this is that uh, unless you're actually sharing your audio and video, uh, I I can't hear what you're saying. So, um, the uh, I I guess very very interested in how you uh, helped organisations get through the design process because as you say uh, particularly larger organizations with very complex systems aren't necessarily geared towards exposing um, functionality through, uh, through through apis so um, is this a, a sort of a set of templates that you have or no no this is a really or is it much more bespoke yeah anime? john John, this is a, that's a really fantastic question. Um, oh, wow, I could go down deep on this. Um, but, but basically, the, um, so the interface uh, that we surface through the IDP is customizable with certain rails. So right now, we have, um, right now it's actually, uh, it's not based on different templates that we have because customers have come to us and saying, hey, we need to be able to, um, you know, so for example, if you're going to do a, a top up from grad, if you wanted to use our funds transfer endpoint, right? Um, mm -hmm. like they would want it branded as grab, let's say, right? right. And so, yeah. um, and so, you know, in that, in that sort of scenario, right, what it means is that we, um, we would have to, um, uh, you know, we would, so you can customize the IDP based on certain parameters, but there are certain parameters that we limit, right? Um, and so, you know, things like, you know, being able to change, for example, the background color or the, um, uh, or the call to actions or whatever on the IDP is something that mm -hmm. we give control to our customers. Um, however, yeah. uh, we we have to be flexible. Uh, we have to be flexible to a certain point um, because there, you know, it, it, it you know, we there are there are elements there which will start to break. You know, for example, if we selected certain fonts, right, and those appear in Indonesian, then it would break the CSS mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing, right? So, um, you know, so th there's there's definitely things that we have to um, sort of balance there for sure. So we're actually creating a, a, an automated CMS in the back, uh, which we're hoping to get out um, before the end of this year um, so that customers can actually tailor it themselves. But for now, they're coming to us and we're tailoring it based on those rails. Right, so it's a classic software product problem that uh, you want to create a, a standard that people um, that that people can can plug and play. Um, and if you if people need you, you offer a certain level of of customization at the edge. But uh, if it involves your core product, um, the, the core of your your engine, then that's something that um, you're you're going to restrict uh, what what people can do with that. Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. We, we, we have to put rails on it. Otherwise, we're going to end up build, building a WordPress or something. And <laughs> that's something which we, we, we don't have time to invest on. We have to invest on uh, time around how to ensure um, transactions are actually happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. OK. All right. Well, great. Thanks. Thanks very much for, for sharing that with us. I, I think we've, we we understood from uh, from from Todd's present keynote uh, this morning about the, the whole landscape of open banking, but you've given us a, a feel for um, how um, how the nuts and bolts of that of that work with um, and and how each institution can can approach it either either building it themselves or with help or or with with partners. Yeah, absolutely, John. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much.